Hi golfers and welcome to our golf hallway. I'm Coach Carolyn and today we're going to talk about your worst nightmare, also my worst nightmare, the slice. Okay, so what causes the slice? And I want to really be super simple and clear on this because it is really only one thing that can cause your slice. It is your path being over the top, your path coming out to in and your face being open to that path. So we're gonna do a little bit of girl math here, golf math in this case. So let's say your path is left, meaning it's coming over the top from out to in. So it goes from right to left. If you're on a trackman, it would give you a negative path. Let's say this path is negative eight, okay? Just for the sake of example. This is a negative eight. Now your face, your club face, when you're coming into the ball now, let's say your club face is a negative four. So that means your face is still pointing left, right? Your face is shut at negative four. Your path is negative eight. So what's the difference there? That's four, right? So your face is still four degrees open to your path. Because if your face was negative eight as well, so let's say your path was negative eight, out to in and your face was negative eight, then your path and your face would be the exact same, would fa be facing the exact same way, right? So then you, the ball would go dead straight left, of course, wherever those two are facing. There's no difference between negative eight face, negative eight path. But as soon as you have a negative four path, it's four degrees less shots than your path. So now your face is open to your path. Let that sit for a little bit. Okay, you follow me? <laughs> This can sound more complicated than it is, trust me, but really the point being is that there is a difference in how close or open your club face is to your path. So when you have a path that is left and a face that is open to your path, while it can still be left, it doesn't have to be, it could also be square. So if your face was at zero and your path was negative eight, then your face is actually square at impact, but your path is left. So now you have an eight degree difference in face and path. So the more difference you have here, the more open your face is to your path, the more of a slice you're gonna get. Quick interruption, guys, because I do need to share a really exciting piece of information, which is my golf clinic that I'm gonna be holding in Naples, Florida at Old Corkscrew this December 13th and 14th. There's only limited spots available, so make sure you snag yours. We're almost sold out. So check the description box below where I have all the different links and things that you need to know if you're interested in joining me and actually taking our golf out onto the golf course. So let's use two alignment sticks that are different colored to show you what that impact really has on your slice, on your ball flight in general. So here we go. This orange stick is going to represent my path and this yellow stick is gonna represent my club face. So let's say my path is eight degrees left like we just talked about, right? So let's just for the sake of that, whether that's exactly eight degrees, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Um, we're just demonstrating this. So this is left, my path, and that's where my club travels, right? The path it travels on. Now let's take our club face stick and put that just parallel to the target. So it's pointing straight at the target, it's a square face at impact. You see that there's a difference right here, right? You can see this difference. So I wanna to explain to you what creates the slice. So we have a left path, and we have a straight face, and the more difference there is here, the higher that number of difference is, the higher degree of that, the more spin you're gonna have on the club because you're gonna cut across more. So if I just moved my path orange stick to the left, the bigger your slice is gonna get. Also, if I move my face now more left, there's still a difference between the two, but it's getting less, so the slice and the spin are gonna get less. Um, same thing happens if I now had a face that was parallel to my path, this does not create a slice because now they're just overlapping, right? They're literally on top of each other. So now there's no difference in face and in path, and that ball is just gonna go dead left, straight. No spin, no curve, nothing. So if your path is straight and your face is straight, it goes dead straight. If your path is right and your face is right, it goes dead right. So do you see what happens here? So if there is no difference in face and path, there's only, the ball's gonna go straight into the direction that both of them are facing. Now, if we actually went the other way and we went, had our face open, so let's say our face is open and our path is straight, our ball is also gonna have spin. It's also gonna have right spin. So now you're actually hitting a push slice because your ball is gonna start slightly right of the target. It's gonna keep spinning right off the target. So 
a slice is always a difference between your club face and your club path. And it's always because your face is more open to the path. So how do we fix that? Now that we've understood what creates a slice and what creates spin and curve, spin is essentially curve, we can now understand what we need to do to mitigate it and to minimize it, right? So now, number one, if you have a slice, I encourage you to, sh to check where does it start? Does it start way left of the target? Does it start straight and then go to the right? Or does it start right and go to the right? Because those are all options, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, those are all options. So in order to check that, what I like to do is I go behind me and then I pick a spot right in front of the ball, like right here. And then I put an alignment stick in the ground, right? Just like this. And then when I hit, I actually check where does the ball miss the alignment stick? Left, right, do I hit it? Or does it go straight over it? So this is a really good reference point for you, but you have to stand behind yourself and put that alignment stick straight in front of the ball. So that's what I would encourage you to do. Once you've figured out whether your ball starts straight, right, or left of your target with a right curve, then we can kind of look at the path and then you'll know, okay, what's going on? Is my path left? Is my face left? Is my path, you know, more to the right? What's happening here? Now, essentially to fix a slice, what we want to work on is to make sure that we can straighten out our path and our face as much as we can. So we want to have these two alignment sticks pretty much aligned at impact. How do we hit a fade? How do we mitigate this? So a fade in an ideal scenario is this. So your path will be a little bit left and your face will be a little bit right. That creates a perfect fade. But we do not want to have a lot of discrepancy here between these and have our orange path pointing left. Okay, so now that we've explained this, here's my hallway drill for you guys that is going to fix your left path, especially for those of you guys that struggle with that hard left path, is super simple. You've seen it before. You can do this out on the course by either taking a club and put, just putting your arm out front, I'm sure you've seen this, and swinging and just making sure you're swinging underneath that arm. Because what that does is it kind of deactivates your right side and lets the club swing and actually release. A lot of the time when you slice it, your right shoulder goes over and you hold on to the club and you don't release it, hence the face stays open, right? So we just talked about the face being open to your path making sure you can release the club. This drill is a great one with your club, making sure you actually release it, making sure that right shoulder stays stable and the whole shoulder area really stays stable and that right shoulder goes under much more. Because if you were to go over, see how that left hand will now actually start pointing forward right here. You don't want that left hand to change. So make sure that hand is fixed and you can now swing underneath it. That'll really straighten out your path and see how my path is already more into out. And if you guys are going to come for me that that path is too into out, we are exaggerating because we are currently struggling with a slice. We're currently struggling with a left path in this scenario. So we got to exaggerate. And the hallway drill equivalent of this is, and I encourage you guys, if you obviously don't make it to the golf course every single day, not even I do. This is why we're all here. This is why we love our hallway so much. And make sure you just put your hand onto any wall. You don't even need a hallway. If you have one, great. I'm here for it. <clears throat> and make sure you do that same drill and you swing through and that really keeps you stable. It gets that right shoulder down. You can also put a little bit more transition into it. I like doing that, you know, pushing that left hip back, getting that right shoulder low and really just feeling like I'm swinging underneath there. Whoops, that's my wall. Here we go. This is a great drill. I hope this made sense to you guys. I hope you guys can stop struggling with those slices because it can be really, really frustrating, but really it is an issue of your right shoulder, of your right side, getting too active, getting over the top, making sure that we keep our path more neutral, making sure that right shoulder stays back and down and that we can learn how to release the club and that's gonna straighten out your path. If you like this video, please leave me a comment below, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. I drop videos here on a weekly basis and I can't wait to see you guys next time.